Hi, and welcome back to our channel, LW Pharmacy School. Tonight, or today, uh, depending on where you are in the world, we are going to cover the practice questions part three. Now, let me be honest with you. This video is gonna be short, quick, and to the point, okay? Um, I don't have a lot of time today, and so I'm going to do my best to cover all of what some of my friends have asked for. Most of you have asked for um, institutional questions. Some of you have asked for grains questions. Um, and so I have included that as much as I possibly can. If for any reason you do not see your question here, please know that there are other people in front of you and you will see your question pretty soon, okay? I will try to my best to incorporate them into every video. Uh, remember that every second Monday of the month, we do a free crash course. This upcoming Monday, we are doing a free crash course for all my friends out there, okay? Let me give a quick shout out to all of my friends who have passed their PTCP exam or their EXCPT exam, watching my videos or attending my sessions. Kudos and congratulations to you. You've just embarked upon a new part, a new journey in your life, and I wish you the very best. All of us at LW Pharmacy School are so proud of you and we know that you will do well in your new setting, okay? Um, if we have helped you on this page, please like, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell for notifications because we want you to stay up to date as we continue to upload information every Wednesday to help you all. So next Monday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, we will host a live lesson Okay, um, I am going to make sure that I put the link in here in this video description so that way you can attend the live session next Monday. Um, and then on Wednesday, we will upload the video that we record on Monday. Okay, so remember every Wednesday at one o'clock standard time, we always upload a new video to help you with your studies. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started because I don't really have a lot of time. Uh, we have been booked and busy with a lot of different community events as well as helping our friends around the world study. Um, shout out to all my friends in Egypt, my friends in Poland. Uh, I see you. Y'all are doing your thing and I am so proud of you so if you are outside of the united states and um oh i got a new friend from iraq shout out to my new friend from iraq i see you i'm so glad that we're working together if you are not in the country of the united states of america and you are using this channel and you are watching me and you're taking me everywhere with you all around the world drop a comment below i want to know where you are i want to know where you're from i want to know what i can do to help you i truly enjoy you guys coming and being a part uh, of my channel and allowing me to really help you on this journey okay uh the next question or the first question rather is medication dosage form so it, it talks about the dosage form of um how it formulates in the stomach okay which dosage form is formulated to dissolve in the intestines rather than the stomach okay there is a typo here this should say is and not us okay humans make mistakes if a human created it there is not a hundred percent that there won't be a mistake so if a human created you can almost guarantee that somewhere somehow there's going to be a mistake somewhere uh, but again, which dosage form is formulated to dissolve in the intestines rather than the stomach? Is it sublingual, transdermal, enterocoded tablet, or intranasal? Remember that enterocoded tablet bypasses the stomach and it goes to the intestine. I had a friend that asked to see this in Washington, D.C. I hope this is helping you. This is your question, okay? Hopefully you're getting this. Uh, but remember, it is always the uh, enterocoded tablet that is going to bypass the stomach and go into the intestines, okay? We're going to the next one. The next question, institutional setting. Shout out to my friend in San Antonio, Texas, who wanted this question. Big state of Texas, great state of Texas. I'm in Texas, so I love it. Uh, which non-governmental agency is responsible for the accreditation of institutional setting? Which non-governmental agency is responsible for the accreditation of institutional setting? Is it AMA, ASHP, JCO, or APHA? Okay, the answer is Joint Commission. The Joint Commission on Accreditations of Healthcare Organization is responsible for institutional settings accreditation, okay? It is not responsible for community or retail setting, okay? Um, but it is responsible for the accreditation of hospitals. So institutional setting would be a hospital. That could be an uh, ambulatory facility. That could be a rehabilitation facility. Any place where a person 
can live or not live, but maybe be a patient where they are actually checked in. Um, not like a hotel, no, but it's going to be where they can actually, um, you know, be checked into the hospital. So remember, people can have an overnight stay at the hospital. People can have an overnight stay at therapy, right? At rehabilitation places, right? So that's what this is about. This isn't about community or retail. This is about institutional where patients are in. So you see institutional in, okay? So when you think about institutional, it's any facility where a patient can spend the night live or stay overnight right or stay for a long period of time so again this is not a group home they do not certify or accreditate group homes or anything like that uh, but it's going to be more so home uh home health it will also be um any type of ambulatory you know facility rehabilitations hospital that sort of thing this shouldn't be too hard for you all to remember dose calculations Dijoxin is available in, in a concentration of 0 0.1 milligrams per ml. How many milliliters are required to administer a 75 microgram dose? Our right, answer choices to the left, okay? Now, um, the first thing you want to, you always want to remember that whenever you don't see a number in front of an ml, that you automatically assume that that number is one. One, one, one. One, 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 one okay? You always put the one right in front of there. So I've done that here, right? Up, oh, where's my mouse? Oh, let's see. Hmm. Oh, sorry, guys. My mouse isn't on. Here it is. And now it is flipping through my slides. There it is. So 0 0.1 milligram per 1 ml equals 75 micrograms per X ml. What do we mean? You got micrograms and milligrams? Yes, we do. Okay, and I'm going to show you how you're going to do this. Now, I always wait to do my conversions at the very end because for me, it's easier to give my answer and then to do my conversion. Some people like to do their conversions at the beginning. It really doesn't matter um, as long as you get to the same answer. That's what I'm looking for is for you to get to the same answer that I get to, which is always the correct answer, okay? So 0 0.1 milligrams divided by one or over one equals 75 micrograms over XML. The first step is going to be 75 times one equals 75. And then you're going to do 75 divided by 0 0.1, which is going to give you 750, okay? 750 is in milligrams because that's where we are here. But we need to turn this into, uh, we need to actually convert it from micrograms to milligrams, okay? And so in order to do that, we are going to, I'm sorry, it's in micrograms. And so we need to convert it from micrograms to milligrams, right? Um, and here we are. Um, we are going to have 75 times one equals 75, and then 75 divided by 0 0.1 equals 750. You're gonna take the 750 and you're gonna divide that by 1,000. And we're dividing it by 1,000 because micrograms converted into milligrams must be divided. But if you're going from milligrams to micrograms, you're going to multiply, okay? Micrograms to milligrams divide by a thousand. Milligrams to micrograms multiply by a thousand, okay? Your answer is going to be B, 0 0.75. Um, a formula for a cough syrup contains one grain of codeine per fluid ounce. How many grains are contained in one tablespoon full? So you remember that one tablespoon is 15 ml. One grain is 30 ml, right? So we know that one tablespoon is going to be half of the, the grains, right? So we have here, um, not, not one grain, it's going to be half of one fluid ounce. So one fluid ounce is 30 ml, and then we have one tablespoon full, which is 15 ml. 15 is half of one fluid ounce, right? Okay, so what we're going to do is, the easy way to do this, you can set it up in a ratio, but I just prefer to just go straight across like this. Um, we're going to do 65 grains, or 65 milligrams, divided by two, okay? 
The two is going to be for the tablespoon full because tablespoon is 15 ml, one fluid ounce is 30, okay? So we're going to see me. And if you want to see me, like, and you want to make sure that we can get this thing jumping, make sure you join that live, okay? If you have any questions, make sure you drop them below. If you